Hey, good morning. Welcome to episode number 14 of our Ephesians study. This will be the conclusion of our time in Ephesians, and we will move on from here to another letter uh, of Paul's starting next time. But today, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 22 is our final episode, our 14th episode in the book of Ephesians. So remember, we have broken this down into three parts that Paul really breaks it down into three parts. There is the part of sit, the part of walk, and the part of stand. Uh, the part of sitting is understanding your position and identity in Christ, being seated with him, seeing your life seated in his. That was chapters 1, 2, and 3. And then we have looked at this idea of walk. That means that once you know your identity and once you know who you are in Christ, what does it mean to walk through this world and walk in this life? How should your life change and what should be the differences in your life as you have walked through life? Now, that is in uh, chapters 4, 5, and the first half of chapter 6 through verse 9. And we finally get to the last part of chapter 6, or the last part of the three parts of Ephesians, and that is the part of stand. How do I stand strong in the Lord? Uh, when Joshua was... Uh, was given the command to go before the Israelites. He was given the command to lead the Israelites after Moses had died uh, multiple times in a row in chapter one, two, three, and four, really, uh, God reminds Joshua to stand firm, stand and be courageous, uh, stand up and be the leader that he wants you to be, stand in his truth, stand in his identity, stand in his strength. And we are called to do the same thing. We are to stand in the strength of God. How do you face what's going on in the world around us? How do you face um, the trials of life? How do you face the difficulties? You stand firm in the strength of the Lord. Not in your own strength, because your own strength will fail. You stand firm in the strength of the Lord. Now, Paul is going to call them to do this as we get into the final chapter, or the final part of chapter 6, the final chapter, uh, where Paul is going to really address the fighting against the darkness. Now, the darkness is evident in the world. How do you fight against this? So let's jump into this and understand what Paul is trying to teach us here today uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. Paul says this, finally, my brethren, now brethren is not a, <clears throat> it's not a gender specific. It's really finally my, my uh, brothers and sisters, you can even think of it as in, in Christ. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in, and in the power of his might. Um, so, so Paul is really speaking of standing in the Lord's presence, standing firmly in the might of the Lord, in the strength of the Lord. Again, you don't stand in your own power you stand in the power of God. That's how we stand. Uh, so really, if you think about Ephesians, we are standing, and, and Paul uses this phrase, finally. So he's coming to the end of the letter. So so Paul is saying, in light of in light of all that is God, God has done for you, in light of the glorious standing you have as a child of God, in light of his great plan of the ages that God has made you a part of, in light of the plan for Christian maturity and growth, he, that, that he really gives to us uh, in light of the of the conduct God calls every believer to live in light of the filling of the spirit and our walk in the spirit in light of all of these things there is a battle to fight in the Christian life so in that battle be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might um, literally Paul seems to have taken this idea directly out of 1st Samuel chapter 30 verse 6 uh, where it said that David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, it says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because of the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So the whole context of that is that everybody was upset with David. Everybody was angry with David, so much so that they wanted to kill him. How did David face that? He strengthened himself in the Lord his God. He looked to God for strength, and that's what helped him face whatever he was going through. Uh, that's what we are called to do. We are called to, to strengthen ourselves in God and in the power of his might. It, again, it's not just it's not just ours, it's his might. The word might um, is an inherent it's an inherent power or force. Um, 
um, a, a person, let's say you're, you're a person who's very muscular, um, your muscles are your display of might, even if you don't use them. It's like the reserve of strength. And so that's what God's might is. It is his power, even if it hasn't been uh, used in every situation. So that's what Paul commands the people to do. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, knowing that you have to fight a battle that is before you. Now he's going to tell us how do we fight that battle then, and that's going to be the command to put on the full armor of God. So let's look at this. So he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So again, Paul is saying it's not your own strength. You need to put on God. And in your putting upon God, then you're going to have the power necessary to fight the battle you need to fight. Um, you can't go into a battle unequipped. Just the same way that an uh, a ancient Greek warrior, for example, or an ancient Roman warrior, uh, they could not have gone into a battle without their armor. They needed that armor. You need the armor of God to fight whatever battles are coming your way. And so you need to put on that armor in order to be equipped for the battle that is uh, that is ahead of you. Now, Paul is going to talk about and say that this is not a normal battle that we are in as Christians in this world. You should be aware of that. The battle that we are facing today in our world today is not a standard battle that you would think of. This is something, in fact, very different. Now, Paul is going to say this battle is a spiritual battle. It's not a physical battle. So let's look at this together. Paul says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So we're, it's not a physical battle that we're in. We're battling the principalities. We're battling against the powers. We're battling against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Paul did not call the believer to enter into uh, to enter into a physical battle. He called the believer into a spiritual battle. He simply announced this fact: you're not battling against flesh and blood. You're battling on a deeper plane and a deeper level. You are in a spiritual battle. You cannot be ignorant of the fact that you're in a spiritual battle, that there is a spiritual thing that is going on here. Uh, it, it's much of the same idea that Paul states in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, when Paul says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against a spiritual battle that is taking place in the world around us. Paul says these things are principalities, they're powers, they're rulers of darkness in this age, they're uh, the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So Paul is using a variety of terms to refer to our spiritual enemies. Um, they are, their goal is to knock the Christian down from their place of standing. Remember, Paul had said, understand your identity, walk different, and now stand in that, in that knowledge. Don't get knocked over. So Paul is even warning, don't get, get knocked down. Don't get blown over by the battle that you're in. And the battle that you're in is against the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness. It's all a spiritual battle that is going on. So he's going to tell you what to take up and what to do as you face this battle. So let's look at this. Therefore, Paul says, because again, because it's a spiritual battle, not a physical battle. It's not, you know, putting on your physical armor. It's putting on the spiritual armor. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So again, he's giving, he's giving a reiteration of the command he just gave, stand. How do you stand? By taking up the, the full armor of God, by standing in the power and the might of God, that's how you stand. You can't stand on your own. You have to stand in the strength of the Lord. Know who you are in the Lord. Know how the Lord has changed and transformed your life. And now stand in that fact and stand in that strength. So we are able to just, I picked out a few verses uh, to think about this. When Paul says, I want you to stand, there are some things that he says in, uh, in other letters that help us to understand what we can stand in. For example, we stand in grace, according to Romans chapter 5, verse 2. 
it says through him also we have access to, by faith into this grace in which we stand. We also stand in the gospel. That's according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, which Paul says, um, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which you also received, and in which you stand. So you stand in grace, you stand in the gospel. We also stand in courage and strength. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 says, Watch, stand fast in the, in the faith, be brave, be strong. We stand in faith. 2 Corinthians 1.24, not that we have dominion over your faith, but our fellow workers for your joy, for by faith you stand. Again, that's another thing we stand in. We stand in Christian freedom or Christian liberty. Galatians 5.1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. We stand in Christian unity. For uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, Paul says, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you, may, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. You, so you stand together, shoulder to shoulder, with other people in Christian unity. By the way, that's why we need each other in this battle. You can't battle alone. You've got to have soldiers on your right and on your left to be able to battle with you. We stand in we stand really just in the Lord. Philippians 4 1, therefore my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so so stand fast in the Lord. We also should stand in perfect and complete uh, we should stand perfect and complete in the will of God. Colossians 4.12, he's talking to uh, Epaphras, and he says, you're a bondservant of Christ. Um, he greets you, always laboring fervent for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in the will of God. And so all of this is what it means to stand. We stand in the gospel. We stand in the courage and strength. We stand in faith. We stand in Christian freedom. We stand in Christian unity. We stand in the Lord. We stand perfect and complete in the will of God. And all of those things together is going to help us. It means that as we are attacked, we have these things we can stand in. We shouldn't be frightened because we have all of these things to stand in. We shouldn't be apathetic because we have all of these things to stand in. We should be alert and ready for the battle, and we should not even give thought to retreat, no matter what comes our way. Now, Paul's going to say the spiritual armor that we should have as we face all of this. So let's look. Stand, therefore, again, that's just another reminder. You stand, not in your strength, but in God's strength, having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we can only stand when we are equipped with the armor of God that has been given to us in Jesus. We need to take that armor for us. Each of these aspects are symbolic of a part of your life, but really, they all work together as the whole. So stand in truth. Do not ever buy into the lie. Always seek the truth. Always be looking to truth. Truth is what we use to battle. We need truth in order to fight the fight. <clears throat> deception is being thrown at you all the time. So how do you fight deception? You stand in truth. You also stand with the breastplate of righteousness. We are righteous. God has made us righteous. That's what protects our heart and our vital organs. It is the righteousness of Jesus. We and of ourselves are not righteous, but we stand in the righteousness that God has given us. He has made us right. He has made us in right standing. We also put on our feet the, the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is the good news. You can't fight effectively without the right kind of shoes. It's a foundational thing. Even In fact, the word preparation is the word that means a prepared foundation. The gospel is your prepared foundation. Often in battles, and, and in fact, Josephus, who was a, uh, a Jewish historian, recorded this. He talked about that the, the soldiers often had shoes that were very thickly studded with sharp nails coming out of the bottom so that they had a good grip no matter what battle they were in. So as they fought the battle, their feet did not slide. You stay firmly connected to the gospel. You don't slide. You don't... You don't um, you don't get moved off of your foundation and off of your position. Now he's going to go on. Above all, take up the shield of faith 
which you'll be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So he's saying above all, which is really, these are the key things that you have to have. Uh, it isn't the idea that one piece of armor is more important than another, but these things all are interconnected and work together, but you really need this shield of faith because here's what's going to happen. The enemy is going to fire doubt arrows at you all the time, trying to extinguish your faith. If you don't have a shield, those arrows are just going to hit you one after another, and you're going to be tempted to fall away from faith. You take up a shield of faith so that as the arrows are fired, you can block the arrows with the shield that you have. Often these fiery these arrows are lit on fire. They're meant to just burn you up. You take up the faith, which is able to extinguish the arrows that Satan is firing at you. I can't tell you how many times in my life I have had to see in my mind that I'm taking up a shield of faith because I feel those arrows that are being fired at me continuously. So Paul says, take up that shield of faith, take up the helmet of salvation. In other words, to protect your thinking, to protect your mind, to have the right kind of mind, and you have the sword of the spirit. Now the sword was not only a defensive weapon, but it was an offensive weapon. You fight your battle with the word of God. Don't try to fight it with your own creative ideas. You just go back to the word of God and you continue to fight with the word of God. And so whatever spiritual battle you're in, whether it is a, a, a battle in your workplace, if it's a battle in your home life, it's a battle in your community, it's a battle in your church, if it's a battle in your thought life, uh, if it's a battle in the government, you take up the spiritual armor of God, you stand, you don't get moved, you stand in God's truth, and you fight the fight that you need to fight. Now, how do we use all of this? Well, Paul's going to tell us how. Here's how. You pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that it, in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So you pray. Prayer is one of the key ways to put on the spiritual armor. You can't effectively put on spiritual armor without an active and effective prayer life. And Paul says, you pray for yourself, you pray for supplication, you pray for strength, you pray for the other saints, you even pray for me, Paul says, that I may be bold in what I share. That's how we are strengthened. We are strengthened and we put on the armor through an active and effective prayer life life. Now, Paul is going to conclude the letter with these final thoughts. Again, just remember, sit in his presence, walk throughout life and be different and be transformed, and then stand in his strength and in his power as the spiritual battle heats up against you. Finally, here's what he's going to say. But that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts. Again, remember, Paul was writing this from prison in Rome, and so he was sending a beloved, faithful brother and fellow minister. He was going to send them to the church in Ephesus so that they could encourage, he could encourage them and comfort their hearts. Paul is writing from a tough situation, but he is not defeated. He is not discouraged. He is still standing strong in the truth of the Lord. And he sent a fellow brother and faithful Christian to the church in Ephesus to explain all of this and to deliver the letter to them. And then he finally says this, peace to the brethren and love with faith from God, the father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all of you who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. He is ending the whole letter with a blessing. Paul's whole purpose <clears throat> was to give those three ideas, sit in his presence, sit and know your identity in Christ, walk in a worthy manner, walk different, walk changed, be changed, be different, don't be the same anymore, and then stand. When the spiritual battle comes, you stand in God's truth, you stand on the gospel, you stand in the righteousness God gives you, you stand in the salvation that he is providing for you. You take up the shield of faith, and you take up the sword, which is the word of God, and you fight the battle that is before you. Many Christians are so unprepared because they don't really know their identity, and they don't really know how much God has changed them. We need to walk hand in hand with God.
trusting his word, trusting in our identity, allowing him to change us and for us to be different. Don't be content just being the same old person. Don't stay stuck in your sins. Confess your sins and be different. Be transformed and be changed and then stand firm in the power and the strength that God gives you to fight the fight that is before you. We're all in a battle and we can't fight it unless we stand in his armor. Well, that's all we have for Ephesians. Next time, we'll get into the next letter from Paul, and I hope you'll join me back here on the next devotional that will be released just in a couple of days. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you back here next time.